we just thought of calling this adieu justice suresh uh, and i have, have some immediate recollections on his work and his huge contribution to uh, deepen uh, sort of constitutional and democratic values and just a sense of compassionate justice uh, which which is which is so rare i just want to say one line and then throw it open to my dear friend henry who was really so upset this morning uh, when we spoke uh, henry is director people's watch and uh, uh, i'd like to start with him that uh, a senior lawyer from bombay who i contacted this morning he simply said all of us felt safe with judges like him around because we felt that the values of the constitution were respected where they ought to be and i don't think anything more needs to be said than that that uh, he really believed that the, the the fundamental rights are human rights which should reach the last person uh, not just on the street but on the, at the end of the street so uh, henry tiffany thank you so much uh, for joining us as always uh, your contribution to the human rights field has also been huge as is your association was your association with justice suresh thank you tista thank you justice shah and my colleagues here uh, it was a difficult morning this morning to hear from from uh, from my good friend hush that something had happened he was not too sure i had to verify it with tista and mehir and uh, it was difficult for me to share the news with others we become emotional but that was the emotional link we had with justice suresh justice suresh used to proudly tell us that he was guilty of doing much in tamil nadu and not that much in maharashtra these were his own very words and these were words that he used to to share to share on all issues of human rights violations in the state you name it justice suresh was always there for fact findings in very difficult terrains in on issues of coastal shrimp farms halting to issues of fishermen violence violence against fishermen violence of all forms against dalits against adivasis police violence of various sorts ensuring that the panchayats were for 15 long years no elections were held where dalits could participate he was there as well public hearings and fact findings were his forte in the state of tamil nadu and he is he is known in political circles he is known in the judiciary he is known to all ngos here we might have been one or two of us who had engineered and i want to recall names like mr fernandez or the fernandez who was also instrumental in tamil nadu in bringing him over here and what moved us very deeply with this suresh was that he was always there for victims of violence i still remember that he went to uh, uh, when the 20 tamils were killed in the forest near near chittur tirupati forest he went there and when we went there and the forest department stopped us from entering he was told he said henry we are not moving from here we are standing here we will wait till their top official comes and let us in friends it's important for us to also not forget that just suresh was never comfortable with international meetings international meetings international organizations the united nations meant nothing for him the constitution of our country the courts in our country and the public hearings and the establishment of the new standards was what was always urging him to say yes in spite of all the difficulties that he had to to undergo to to say that i also want to recall something that many people in this country don't know he was connected with the asian human rights commission an ngo based in hong kong sometimes it looks a misnomer but an ngo based in hong kong for many many decades he has been related and his contributions there were in places like cambodia and in places like china where he went and did yes. sessions on human rights many people will never believe that just suresh also did those kinds of efforts there so for us it is a big loss and we know what he has done for all of us collectively as a larger human rights committee he could not keep women's rights separate child rights separate dalit rights separate police access is separate for him it was all the united integrated uh, totality of human rights that he stood there to protect sometimes we could forget what is associations were with us what names our organizations had or you know platforms our organizations had some used to call them advisors some called them board members 
for us he always remain a friend and he will continue to remain a friend and i only want to tell you assure you that he will continue to live in your heart for us he was a living judge i remember his words in bhubaneswar when we had a, a small attempt to see whether we could get more high court judges engaged in public work and to them he said please keep your arbitrations going this is not a call against your arbitrations but keep a little time beyond your arbitrations for the people of this country who need it and that is exactly what he did and uh, i can tell you that uh, we value him very greatly it is a very very uh, uh, special loss one month ago he called us he called me i could not pick up the phone and i cannot forgive me myself for that my wife picked up the phone and had a long conversation with him and i had to return that conversation which i have not i want to tell you just as soon as we will continue to communicate with you through our actions you will continue to live with us forever thank you henry uh, the uh, the, the uh, along with justice krishna had i think justice suresh panyard Uh, the entire uh, jurisprudence with people's tribunals and public hearings, especially when just just like Justice A. P. Shah has been pointing out, the edifices of the court started crumbling, and the the the, the guarantees provided by our formal court system started deserting us. It was Justice uh, V. R. Krishna and Justice Suresh and judges like that who pioneered entire jurisprudence to public hearings and uh, people's tribunals, and. Uh, Uh, we're very very privileged uh, uh, to have all of you here together. Uh, 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 Kalpana Kannabiran is a very well known face, both among on the streets, as in seminars and protests, as in among lawyers, both a sociologist and a uh, lawyer herself, highly recognized. Uh, I I just need to mention at this point the outstanding piece that she recently wrote uh, on the incarceration of young student leaders. in delhi under this covid pandemic katna thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh, i mean the first thing i thought of was appa your father uh, when when i when, we, when this morning's news came because he was another person very very dear to us very similar uh, and uh, i remember having both of them together for a glorious 20 days in gujarat in 2002 when we did the concerned citizens tribunal there it were very intimate moments very difficult moments because they were attacked as well the car was attacked but uh, please please join us and say a few words thank you uh, tista uh, and i join all of you in uh, paying tribute uh, to justice suresh uh, i have uh, several several uh, very fond uh, memories of him um, but of course uh, like uh, you said uh, this time my association uh, with justice suresh actually uh, goes back to his association with my father uh, they were exactly the same age both 1929 born and uh, there were several similarities of manner uh, and articulation especially that extremely emotional uh, you know almost passionate kind of a uh, way in which uh, they would agitate over a particular issue uh, and attempt to convince uh, you of a, a a standpoint that might not in fact have occurred to you at all uh, an angle uh, you know a, a a lens a way of looking at a problem uh, and uh, i was just trying to think this morning when i heard uh, that he had passed on uh, you know what were the uh, what were my actual uh, memories of uh, uh, being with him i had of course heard a blow by blow account uh, daily of his work on the uh, tribunal in gujarat where both my parents were there um, and i would hear very different accounts uh, interestingly different accounts from both of them uh but also you know the events and the fact finding teams that i was on with him what struck me was his enormous energy uh and uh, his 
uh, unparalleled acumen, uh, you know, that, that, that just a quiet observation of what is going on. And, uh, you know, just that one quiet question that it doesn't occur to anybody else in the team to ask. Uh, and the, fir the first time I went with him on, uh, you know, on a fact-finding uh, mission was to Singroli as part of the Greenpeace team. Uh, and this was uh, extremely difficult terrain. Uh, it was not easy. We were going through coal overburdens. Uh, we were going through villages uh, which had uh, people who had been displaced over two generations. Um, and on the other side, we were meeting with the NCL officials and going to the Reliance areas. And uh, there may have been a moment when I flagged in energy, but never a moment when Justice Suresh flagged. And I'm talking about 2011. Um, at no point uh, was there uh, any consideration apart from the issue there and trying to educate everybody around him uh, about what we need to look for in in that particular thing so how does the uh, how do, how how does our understanding of the constitution uh, inform our understanding of what happened in singroli i remember that this was a major conversation uh, that we had uh, that this is a particular issue of displacement. Uh, how do we understand it within the framework of the Constitution? Uh, after that, uh, I didn't meet him for a few years. And then uh, subsequently, we met in the, uh, 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 you know, the public hearing on uh, shrinking democratic spaces in higher education, particularly in Delhi. Uh, and he and Justice Kolse Patel. Now, that was such a fantastic combination, the two of them, you know. Uh, and, and it just uh, provided a very, very different method uh, to the entire exercise of fact-finding. So for me, it's also been a very deep learning, just watching all these judges uh, and uh, lawyers of that generation but also judges, and we have Justice A.P. Shah here with us. You know, it's, it's an enormously educative experience to just, uh, you know, begin to see that what you are trying to say uh, as a non-judicial person is actually making judicial sense. You know, and is actually getting read within the, you know, what, you, what you're saying out of an uh, experience of empathy is actually getting understood as an experience within a constitutional uh, language. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if I remember right, Henry, but he was he not there at the Tutukuri hearings as well? Yeah. The public inquest at Tutukuri. I mean, this was even later. This was a couple of years ago. So my complete amazement that uh, here, uh, you know, we are saying, no, we're getting older and less energetic. And here is somebody like Justice Suresh, who, whose energy never, ever flagged. Uh, nor did his, you know, did his sharp engagement uh, with issues ever flag. And I was looking at some of the work that he did and the kind of engagement. So there's not a single area he hasn't gone to. He was in Kashmir, he was in Gujarat, he was in Karnataka, he was in Maharashtra during the riots. And he's written on such a wide range of issues, Tamil Nadu, as Henry said. Uh, I was reading also his article uh, on corruption when Justice Dinakaran was in the dock. Uh, and uh, that is a, uh, you know, a textbook explanation of how one looks at judicial accountability. Uh, and, and it's just so beautifully articulated. So I think that really what he contributed is, uh, you know, is a way that all of us can understand the law uh, as rooted 
in human empathy. And I particularly liked one uh, statement of his in, in, in the Outlook article, where he says judicial integrity is not just a private virtue, but a public necessity. And I think now, today, in 2020, uh, you know, I mean, I was just looking at Safura Zargar's case and the several other cases before us. And I think in 2020, this is really what we need to keep reminding ourselves and the judiciary of. Because somewhere, I feel that this, this basic tenet is getting lost. So when Justice Suresh leaves us, I am just holding on, you know, to this string and saying, no, we let you go, but we won't let you go. You know, we need this. Uh, it is uh, really our uh, lifeline in a sense. So uh, very much, you know, I, we will miss him. But I think uh, what we are enriched with uh, is, is what he has imparted to us through his long association with us. What does one say about Mihir, Mihir Desai, uh, senior, senior advocate, friend, again, a very, very fine participant in human rights jurisprudence in cases across the board on so many issues. And I just want to flag, of course, apart from being senior counsel and all of that, I just want to flag one particular article which he wrote, which we were privileged to carry, which was on uh, COVID and the Supreme Court. And I think that article is again I think textbook reading uh, for for everybody that is concerned with the law, and I, he had also very very long association with Justice Sudesh and uh, Mihir. Uh, thank you. I, I I really don't know where to start and where to end, but uh, let me just uh, begin with my initial experience with him when uh, he was a judge of the Bombay High Court between eighty six and ninety one. And I was a very, very young lawyer. Uh, I remember one, one day in the in 87 or 88, I don't remember exactly which year, uh, I had a case before him which, can, uh, which was about slum demolition. And uh, one never knew because a lot of this, these kind of cases depend on the discretion of the judges as to uh, whether they will stay, they will not stay. I, of course, as a young, enthusiastic lawyer, had rehearsed my arguments at home about three, four times, uh, lengthy arguments, and uh, went to the court. Uh, but within one minute, he told me, OK, just wait, Mr. Desai. And uh, he granted a stay uh, against demolition. He asked the state government something and granted a stay. Uh, and that was my first memory. Of course, that matter was carried to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court uh, by the state and the uh, by the municipal corporation and the and the Supreme Court uh, dismissed uh, the corporation's uh, appeal, but of course those were different times and that was a different Supreme Court. So uh, we are talking. So, uh, but my, uh, but that was the kind of passion he had. Even as a even when he was a judge, the passion for justice and of course it it was completely unshackled once he retired. <laughs> uh, in 91, 92, 91 he retired, and uh, I guess from I think from December 91 onwards, when he uh, uh, he started with the tribunals on the Kaveri riots, uh, Kaveri related riots in Bangalore, etc. When, when he started, and then 92, 93 for the Bombay riots, followed by various other various other uh, uh, you know fact findings, people's tribunals, public hearings. And the point, and I, of course, I used to meet him quite often. I, I participated with him in various fact findings and uh, public hearings, etc. Uh, and be, being in Bombay, being proximate, plus being, he was a board member of a couple of organizations of which I was a part, and that uh, so we used to meet very often. His enthusiasm and his optimism. I mean, uh, uh, what we need now is optimism, and his optimism never died. I mean, uh, I mean, I met, I, I spoke to him about a month back, but uh, his uh, optimism was always there. Yes, conditions are bad, but you know, be optimistic. We have, we have to really uh, fight this out. We'll win ultimately. People will win, win. You know that that kind of thing. So that was something which was very remarkable about him. And I remember in 2019 April, uh, uh, May, uh, yeah, April 2019, when he was already 90 years old. 
Uh, we wanted to have some uh, booklet released of UCL, and we said, "No, uh, should we ask him? Because uh, even though it's within Bombay, he'll have to travel all the way from his house to, uh, uh, to south of Bombay, etc., etc." We went and approached him, and he immediately agreed. I mean, he said, "Yes, yes, no problem. Only thing is, I want to first read what you have written, and then I come." <laughs> right, and then of course he came. But <laughs> but the point is that the enthusiasm. And uh, and the outspokenness on various issues, which of course we see from uh, Justice Shah uh, very often now, uh, so that, that is always there. But uh, that outspokenness, that uh, uh, the, the the willingness to confront any issue, willingness to take a stand on any issue, no matter how unpopular it may be, as long as he believed in it, that was something which was. Really remarkable, and I, 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 and and his energy, of course, is something which I, I, I haven't seen in many people. You know, that that kind of an energy, that kind of an enthusiasm, and the determination to go to places, as uh, both Kalpana and Handy were saying, that you go, you meet victims, because he always used to feel that the, feel that access to justice in India for majority of the people, they cannot access justice, they can't come to court, and it's important to bring their voices. Out to uh, to, uh, to bring out what their voices are, to bring out what they have to say, to bring out what is the actual reality. May not be a, a may not be proof in the sense of a court or some uh, uh, how how you require evidence, but to bring out their voices, to bring out their plight, is something which I think was uh, 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 was I I feel it was a very uh, 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 very determined kind of a uh, 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 effort which uh, he put in over the years. Uh, coupled with, of course, you can't do this unless you have a passion for the issue. You can't do it across. The, so obviously, he had huge passion for the issue, and uh, I guess it's 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 such a great loss because uh, you know there are very rare people who uh, over uh, who twenty five years, thirty years after retirement, at least twenty twenty years, thirty years, uh, nearly thirty years after his retirement, is so active. And uh, so much attached to the human rights issue, so much attached to the uh, causes of the people, that uh, I feel that. Uh, and 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 even as a judge, I remember. I mean, uh, you all uh, you have spoken about it, Pista. But I uh, but that uh, Subhash Desai versus Sharad uh, Rao judgment, Sharad Rao versus Subhash Desai judgment, which he gave in April ninety one, just before he retired in the July ninety one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where he said, uh, very for the first time, laid down uh, what is a, uh, 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 I mean, how communal speeches will lead you to lose your, uh, uh, will use, uh, will lead you to be disqualified for from being elected, or your your election will be set aside. That's what he did, and that that judgment was upheld in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It was uh, uh, in '94 by Justice Singh. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was something. I think uh, yeah, as a judge, of course, he was. He had few. I mean, I wish he had longer, a longer tenure as a high court judge. <laughs> uh, 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 and because if you are there for four, five years, I think half the times you are in benches and, uh, and uh, you are with uh, a senior judge, and you you don't get much to uh, you know uh, participate. But uh, whatever time he had, he utilized this fully. So as a judge, and then post uh, ninety one as a as a as a as a, uh, as a human rights activist. And I, I think uh, I don't, I, I don't have anything more to say except that it's a great, great loss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. I just have one little humorous anecdote before I come to Prashant about the Mumbai violence of 92, 93, Bombay then, which uh, bo broke out post Babri Masjid because it was dark hours, dark days, uh, precursed Gujarat 2002 by 10 years, and it was actually Justice Daud and Justice Suresh that had done the. Uh, people's inquiry into uh, the uh, violence immediately after. They had almost finished it by April. And the book that came out, People's Verdict, is a very important read for all of us even now. And then you had the official commission being appointed, which was appointed by the Maharashtra government uh, at that time. Uh, and the judge being appointed was uh, Justice B. N. Shri Krishna. And I was talking to Justice Shri Krishna this morning because Justice Shri Krishna jo rose to become a Supreme Court judge and they're very different kinds of pers personalities and both from Karnataka 
and uh, we all many of us found as activists we found just as shri krishna growing with the evidence he heard of of muslim women and men who had been battered in bombay but at the beginning of the entire story of the shri krishna commission in typical judge style shri krishna issued a contempt notice to justice suresh and justice dau for having the people's inquiry and i remember this whole episode very closely because we were involved and uh, all of us were horrified because we were looking forward to the official inquiry as much as we valued the uh, people's inquiry and then as it, as was possible in the india of those days conversations took place with senior members of the bar and justice shri krishna and he was told that you know you're never going to be able to collect the kind of evidence that these judges have got because they've gone to every basti every affected home and collected statements of people so thereafter he sort of converted the statements before the people's verdict into affidavits before the commission but that was possible at that time <laughs> it was a different kind of uh, space and a different kind of time in india and uh, i remember kannabiran also coming down uh, to bombay uh, because the shri krishna commission was disbanded in between when there was a change in political dispensation and we had a dharna at hutatma chowk and it was a very motley group of people who sat at the dharna it was not just kg kannabiran and uh, uh, hm sirvai but also nani palki wala walk down from bombay house so it was a very different kind of india that we lived in at the time and uh, those were precious mem shashi kapoor came and all of that so anyway those were very different moments uh, justice suresh was at the center of that uh, prashant bhushan uh, needs very little introduction and i uh, his entire campaign for judicial accountability both organizationally and individually and the battles he has fought so valiantly in the supreme court uh, also brought in, in close touch with justice suresh Prashant. Thank you, Tista. Uh, much has been said about Justice Suresh already. I won't uh, repeat all that. I just wish to uh, add that uh, he was truly a judge in the Justice Krishna Iyer mold, willing to stand up for every cause of injustice, uh, not just human rights, but wherever he saw injustice. if it was brought to his notice he would stand up against that injustice and stand uh, for getting justice to the victims and that is why uh, as meher pointed out he has a, he had a short innings as a judge but it was really his uh, life after retirement that is uh, far more valuable because where there are very very few judges who uh, take up uh, to or who uh, uh, start uh, engaging with public issues after retirement and who speak out on public affairs and uh, public issues after retirement he was one of those few and somebody who was not only tireless and willing to walk uh, the extra mile uh, but he was willing to engage on every kind of issue of injustice and he was always very soft spoken but very firm and very dogged uh, uh i have had uh, interactions with him on several occasions and several people's tribunals etc we were together in that hyderabad tribunal where we were examining the victimization of uh, uh, of uh, people who were being investigated for terror offences and we came to the conclusion that there was clearly an anti muslim bias in these investigations that was many many years ago that was more than a decade ago during this last decade things have become infinitely worse today we need many more people like him and we are i am so happy that people like justice ap shah justice madan lokur and others are now uh, uh, coming out as <clears throat> and kind of taking the place that justice krishna ayer and justice suresh uh, have left uh, in the uh, in this uh, area of uh, that is judges engaging with public issues and public affairs so uh, of course the justice suresh's passing is a great loss but he had a full innings we will always remember his contribution and we will always be inspired 
by all his qualities and his contribution. Thank you, please. I just want to thank Justice uh, A.P. Shah for joining us at such short notice. Uh, former judge of the Bombay High Court and the Delhi High Court, author of the extremely lauded judgment on uh, gender equality rights, and former Law Commission chairperson. And more than anything else for all of us, the voice of sanity and reason in the last few years when things have really become so gloomy and so dark. I mean, if you read, read Justice A.P. Shah's articles in the Indian Express or anywhere else, he's written on a wide variety of issues, unflinching commitment to equality, diversity, and non-discrimination. I recall both Justice Shah and Justice Lokur being part of the tribunal on the excesses under the citizenship crisis in Assam last year, which Prashant Bhushan, Harsh Mandar, and others had organized. And uh, it was a very humbling experience. Justice Shah. Thank you, Trista. Uh, Justice Hospet Suresh was one of the few giants on whose shoulders the civil rights movement in India today stands. He was inspirational to many of us, which also explain why all of us are gathered today here. Before 1980, he was a judge of the city civil court in Mumbai. Around 1980, he resigned and started practicing, which is when I encountered him for the first time. As a lawyer, he was uh, very effective and a very popular personality, I would say. In 1986, he was elevated as judge of the Bombay High Court. And although he was on the bench only for about five years, retiring in 1991, he left a memorable legacy of a judge who was most equitable, fair, humane, and hardworking. Any member of the bar would certainly have preferred Justice Suresh's court over anyone else's. Speaking for myself, when I appeared before him, it was a great experience, uh, for he was so quick in his understanding and sincere in his handling of cases, whether it's a civil or criminal or any. Unfortunately, he mostly sat as a junior judge on the on the division benches. But uh, I I would say that the I can I can he, he was one of the uh, uh, finest judges of those times. Unfortunately, I never got to work on the bench with him because I was elevated one year after his retirement in 1992. But his next three decades period in public life, his post-retirement work, he, I, I, I feel that he led an extraordinary life and made, made a path-breaking contribution to the human rights space, which I heard from all the, all of, all the speakers who spoke before me. He was on various facts finding commission, I mean, including Kaveri riots to which uh, Mihir referred, People's Tribunal in on the Bombay riots, of course. The, the, I, I still remember that the uh, 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 Justice Sri Krishna issuing a contempt notice to the members of the People's Tribunal. I mean, this was, uh, I mean, many of us. Uh, Oh, were very unhappy the way in which uh, Sri Krishna acted at that time. Unfortunately, he he changed his tongue subsequently. Uh, he authored that reports uh, in Bombay riots. I mean, as people's verdict. Uh, his particularly, I was I I would always remember his work on the forced demolitions and forced evictions in Mumbai. I think he 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 authored one of the reports. Uh, he also worked with uh, Medha Patkar, I think, on these issues of the slum dwellers. Of course, uh, post-2002 Gujarat riots, he was on uh, a committee headed by Justice Krishna here. And indeed, I, perhaps, uh, I, I, I found that he was greatly inspired by Justice Krishna here uh, as a judge and also as, a, as an activist and in his post-retirement period. Uh, and the contributions made by both of them to our country are immeasurable to the space of human rights and fundamental rights activism. After 2002 riots, I, I, 
at, at that time i was uh, uh, i was a judge and then uh, this report was also circulated to me and i am in and the committee uh, worked such painstakingly i mean more than uh, 2000 witnesses were examined the victims ngos and so it was a it was a i mean great work by a a a, a people's committee on on uh, such uh, i i hope i'm i'm Uh, audible this yes, time yes 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 ha uh-huh. ha uh, i recall particularly that around 2003 after this uh, when the actually the committee was still i think uh, uh, investigating into the riots uh, my colleagues and i had organized a two day conclave for sitting judges where uh, we invited uh, several activists experts and judges from all over the world i mean this was an attempt to have a conversation with the uh, people outside the judiciary i mean and, and many sitting judges uh, joined this conclave justice uh, ck thakkar was the chief justice at that time so judges from nepal and sri lanka came then asma jangir came to this conclave uh, justice suresh was also one of the invited speakers and he was speaking on the matter of uh, forced evictions he was openly critical of the judgments of the uh, some of the judgments of the bombay high court and he absolutely fearless about these matters so some judges later complained to me about this criticism some of them wanted to leave the leave the 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 this particular conclave because of justice suresh's strong remark on the on the judgments of the bombay high court of course i mean everything there after went well 2003 conclave where suresh came he participated in discussions he spoke on forced evictions and demolitions in the city and uh, 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 frankly i mean his uh, he was very effective and i mean some judges took exception to his criticism but uh, that was his signature style and precisely where his charm and personality lay i would he would become very emotional very persuasive to prove his point and he never minced any words uh, he was honest sincere blunt and forthright uh, at the same time he was a very kind and simple human being very very affectionate very uh, very uh, i mean concerned about everybody unassuming and he and he remained true to his principles right till this very end till this very end uh with his passing i would say that the indian human rights movement has lost an influential intellectual and inspirational human being and a a very good human being this loss is specially felt in current times when institution after institution is failing and the judiciary of which justice suresh was a member and a critic is continuing to disappoint us his loss will be felt greatly at least we can do what we can do is to keep the flame that he has left in the human rights space alive and burning for the times to come as a mark of respect and gratitude to justice suresh and his ilk and uh, uh, and finally i mean just uh, i mean i would recall a uh, very interesting anecdote about justice suresh's judge i mean they just, just it is seen that the judges were provided cars with drivers for first time i mean during his when he was a judge and then um, he would not he declined the uh, as he said that he would drive the car by himself and near the high court on that road when he was driving and the his that uh, red light was on so uh, sharad pawar was the chief minister and he stopped the car and he thought the driver is uh, is actually driving the car and he is he has kept the red light on and then just this suresh you know i mean explained to him that uh, he is a judge sitting judge and sharad pawar apologized profusely so that was suresh i mean he was very very simple i mean as a judge also i remember uh, he was very unassuming so i mean it's a great loss for all, for all of us thank you tista thank you justice shana
one of his favorite stories to me which is very amusing was one his trip to china i henry mentioned that he went to china and cambodia and uh, he was naturally by cho- choice a vegetarian and uh, just occasionally enjoyed a drink but uh, uh, he said in, i couldn't refuse them tista they were giving me all kinds of creatures to eat but if the hosts are giving you something you have to eat what they give you right and he would never fuss he would just eat whatever was given to him and then he described how he would he was compelled to take these shots of a little liquor which was passed around the table and he said i didn't realize how potent it was because it just kept pouring more and more shots you know and uh, he was just he was just amazingly uh, simple very very uh, such a good human being and his one of his favorite lines was you know he says when i used to sit on the bench i used to say my voice is my conscience because i would dictate my judgments loud enough for the last person in the room to hear no fumbling and no mumbling for me and very very privileged to have just as ap shah who was cut from the very same mold uh who 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 are committed to something which are values beyond the prestige and the position of being judges and i just felt that the sharing today was very very important uh, thank you so much all of you for agreeing at such short notice cutting short meetings and everything else uh, let's hope that more and more people like justice shah justice lokur and justice hasbit suresh uh, continue to inspire the indian human rights movement thank you very very much everybody thank you thank you this sir